so good afternoon. I'm here to talk to you about the origins of the Iberian Peninsula. There are quite a few strange stories and facts and ideas surrounding the Iberian Peninsula and its peoples. And the peninsula drift theory tries to come up with an explanation that brings together all these facts and stories and tries to <laughs> explain a bit of the, the Iberian character. So most of us are familiar with the continental drift theory, according to which the Earth's continents were once together and then they broke apart and drifted. And this theory was initially inspired by this close fit between the, the coastline of South America and the one of uh, Western Africa. And uh, the rest of the world, the, the upper part, uh, North America and Europe do not fit so well. They're here, they're here a bit dissimulated on the top. But these two continents really seem like two uh, adjacent pieces of a puzzle. And this is what triggered the whole continental drift theory. So I was once looking at uh, different thematic maps of the Iberian Peninsula side by side, and I noticed an almost equally close fit between the northeastern tip of the Iberian Peninsula, which is in the region, the, uh, the Spanish region of Catalonia, and the northeastern coast in the region of Galicia, which could only lead me to one conclusion. The Iberian Peninsula was once linked to itself <laughs> in the past. <laughs> the thing is, how could this have happened? It's more or less easy to imagine how uh, South America and Africa were together once, and then they separated and split apart and drifted, but they are still front to front with each other, so it's e easy to imagine how it happened. But how could this, could the Iberian Peninsula go from this state of circular union with itself to its current geographical configuration in the southwestern tip of Europe? The peninsula drift theory tries to explain how this may have, hap have happened. And one of the reasons why there's not such a clear fit between North America and uh, Western Europe is because Europe did not look then like it does now. And what the Iberian, uh, Iberian the Peninsula Drift Theory postulates is that the Iberian Peninsula did, was not a part of Europe, or of Earth for that matter. Iberia was the only continent of an independent microplanet that was drifting in space close to the Earth until they both collided <laughs> and, and got fused together. I mean, it, it may seem a, a bit unbelievable at first, but I've actually found quite a few images of similar things happening on the internet. Uh, of course, they were, uh, they were mostly from video games and such, but still. And this second image is even more, even more similar to what I imagine happened between Iberia and former Earth. Iberia was drifting in space with this uh, little continent that was Iberia you know, linked with with itself, and then they collided softly, slowly, non-violently, and <laughs> Iberia became attached to the Earth. And then a process similar to the budding of yeasts uh, happened, but in reverse. If you're not familiar with the budding of yeasts, it's like there's a yeast cell, and then a little bump comes up on one side, and eventually it separates, and another yeast cell uh, grows apart. With Iberia and the Earth, it's, uh, it was the other way around. No? That, that's the that little ball that was the Iberian Peninsula drifting in space got fused with the Earth, and then it unfolded until it acquired its current geographic configuration of today, and it was attached to the southwestern tip of Europe. I realized that it may seem a bit implausible at first, but it's really not once you start looking at the evidence. And no less than four lines of evidence support this theory so far. Uh, the first line of evidence is similar to the line of evidence of the continental drift theory. It's the similarity in rock types and main soil types of uh, South America and Africa, and also here of the north e northwestern and northeastern coasts. The, the, the main uh, types of soil and rocks are basically the same between these two regions. They are currently so far apart. Then the second line of evidence comes from an article that I found at the Spanish Encyclopedia. It's like a mock Wikipedia thing, but it's really interesting. You should read it. It's in, uh, it's in Spanish. And it has this article about the city of Barcelona. Now, Barcelona is the capital of Catalonia, which is this northeastern region. Uh, and what does this article say? It's in Spanish, but I'll translate it for you. So it goes, Barcelona was founded many years ago, even before Spain. It is supposed that in the beginning, it was a suburb of the pagan city of Sant Boi, uh, founded by the Romans when they got lost on the way home. In it, there was a well-known bar belonging to Camilo José Sela, who later passed it to his daughter, who was tremendously fat, and for that she was known as La Salona. Um, so basically, Camilo José Sela is a, a very famous Spanish writer. He won the Nobel Prize of Literature in 1989, 
and he's Galician. He was born and raised and lived in Galicia. And so he had this bar, this daughter that was really fat, so she was Sailor's daughter, Sailor's big daughter was called Salona, and she inherited the bar. And the bar of Salona, which was obviously in Galicia because that's where Sailor lived, um, was the only thing left of the city after the separation of Gondwana into several continents. And this is where the city started being rebuilt, and this is the reason for its strange name. So they didn't really get the facts right. They called Gondwana to some other continent, but they, they already had this notion that um, Barcelona was originated in Galicia, and then it got separated by some kind of continental drift thing. So they were not very far from the truth, but they didn't really get the facts right. Um, and the article goes on saying the further evidence of the Galician origin of the city of Barcelona are, for example, the possibility of buying Galician bread anywhere, uh, the existence of a Galician neighborhood, Poblasec, or the network of Galician taxi drivers that's extended throughout the city. And moreover, a great part of the most typical showbiz artists of Barcelona is either Galician or Galician or, uh, origin. Moncho Borrajo, Julia Otero, Pepe Rubianes, Professor Palomino, these are all famous characters in Spain, of course, nobody here knows them, nobody here knows them, but um, yeah, I can confirm that in Spain they are famous and they're all Galician origin and they all live in Barcelona. So this is the second line of evidence. From com something from a completely independent source, I did not write this, uh, and the source that is not non, no less reliable than me, saying that Barcelona originated in Galicia, which could not obviously have happened if uh, Galicia and Barcelona were as far apart as they are today, but could perfectly have happened if they were together in the past, as the Iberian Drift theory postulates. The third line of evidence comes from another uh, Nobel Prize of Literature winner, the Portuguese writer José Saramago, who wrote, among many others, a book called The Stone Raft, uh, which pictured the Iberian Peninsula drifting away alone in the, in the ocean after breaking off the European continent. Now, once again, Saramago was very bright. He knew something about the Iberian Peninsula being something different and being something separate, apart from the rest of the continents. But, of course, he was not aware at that time of the peninsula drift theory, so he did not know that the Iberian Peninsula was uh, of extraterrestrial origin, and it drifted uh, from Europe not after, but before it was attached to Europe, and in outer space right, rather than in the Atlantic Ocean. And finally, the fourth line of evidence is the, this urge that the Iberian peoples, the Portuguese and Spanish, manifested very early uh, the, of, to conquer the world. What do aliens usually do as soon as they touch ground on a new planet? They, they start to spread and try to conquer everything and stick their alien flags everywhere, which is exactly what the Portuguese and Spanish did around the 15th and 16th centuries. This is a, a photo of a map that I took last month at, at the Maritime Museum in, in Lisbon, uh, and it shows Portuguese and Spanish flags everywhere around the world, which is the, what we did when we landed. So, all these four lines of evidence, the match between rock and soil types, Barcelona originating in Galicia, I, this idea of Iberia drifting independently from the other continents and this Iberian conquering spree, all point in the same direction, that Spanish and Portuguese people were adopted, were, were not from this earth. And <laughs> sociologically, it, it, it figures, it's not very implausible. But anyway, this is still a theory. It may need further, further studies to be reinforced we might, for example, have to study the rock types more detailedly, not just the, the match between coarse, uh, broad-scale soil type, but specific types of rocks to see if they match between Galicia and, and Catalonia. We may need to take a closer look at the fossil records to see uh, if the, the live beings in the past were also similar between Galicia and Catalonia, not only Galicians, but also other forms of life. Uh, for this, we can dig in uh, websites like Fossil Works and the Paleobiology Database but we can do, do also some field work. And in sum, this calls for a work between many different disciplines, like geology, lithology, paleontology, astronomy, sociology, none of which are unfortunately anywhere near my field of expertise. But anyway, I had already published this theory or an, an, an incipient version of it in a blog some years ago. Uh, strangely, nobody seemed to pay it much attention. Nobody gave it much credit. The only comments I had were of skeptical people that said, like, what? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I finally, finally found a forum where I can expose these ideas and to people that are able to appreciate the science behind them. So thank you, for the, thank you to the, the organizers of the symposium and to you all for listening to this bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Uh, 
I couldn't help but noticing a, a connection between your talk and the previous talk, yes. which is that in the map that you saw of the exactly. mutants, there was clearly the Iberia was a completely red, it was a hot spot, and maybe their model failed to Not see the particularly high spots in Galicia and Catalonia. So I was wondering if you were thinking maybe you could look at the habits, of the, maybe the number of anti-clockwise <laughs> That is exactly what I was theory. thinking. I was not aware of their theory before, but I was really happy to see that map because it really matches my theory as well. The, the hot spot, the, the center is the Iberian Peninsula, and then all the other hot spots of aliens, mutants, whatever they call them, are the same main places where the, the Spanish and Portuguese stick their, stuck their flags in the, in the 15th and yeah. 16th century. So, so, so maybe it you really, should collaborate. It really matches. All, all, everything makes sense. So do you think that the Pyrenees are actually the point of impact? And uh, so that, would that explain the... Yeah, the, yeah, the, the Eastern Pyrenees should be the, the contact point. Yeah, that that's, uh, sounds perfectly reasonable to mm -hmm. me. <laughs> Uh, so, and the, the other thing, do you think that this would impact other theories, namely the notion about the Iberian Peninsula being a refuge for biodiversity during the glaciation? Do you think that actually it might all be extraterrestrial life forms and I not, not really know. a I refuge? I did not dig on that aspect, unfortunately, didn't have the time. That is among the works that I am planning for the future development of the theory. There's just one part of your theory that I don't really understand. And that is, despite your attempt to analogize with yeast, I, I couldn't really understand why there aren't two Iberian peninsulas. You think there should be two? Well, I... <laughs> I mean, I, and actually, uh, the fact that there are, is not, are not two leads me to believe that the hypothesis is wrong. Because you couldn't, you, there was no explanation for why the, the contact between these two edges. But I have a better explanation. Maybe it was yours, but you didn't explain it properly. Sorry? Which, maybe your explanation was, in fact, this, which is that the microplanet mm -hmm. in, was so small that Galicia and Catalonia met around the other side. Yes. Was that your model? Yes. That was not clear. <laughs> no, graphics were lousy. That, that. Uh, they were. You needed a movie. Yeah, yeah, I need a movie. I, I, I tried to look at it. I, I'm not very good at graphics, so I realized that the planet, when I did the planet the closest to it, the, the spherical form, you could not see any, you could just see yellow. You could just see the content. So. If I couldn't make it spin, the only way to make it look round and spherical, uh, it, they couldn't have to touch on the other side. But you could look at it as a photo, one of those photos with a round lens that distorts things a bit, so you can see it better, but it's distorted, but you can see, uh, have a better picture of the, the whole thing. But I, I, I recognize that it's not good. I'm not good at graphics. So, I'm an American. <laughs> Oops. An average American. and therefore ignorant about many things Iberic. But one fact that was uh, told to me that this theory seems to perhaps explain, which would add weight to your theory, is that for some reason the railroad tracks in Europe change gauge yeah. between France and Spain. Exactly. That could there be is some story about this having to do with um, dictators and world wars and things like this, but if it is in fact because of the extraterrestrial origin of the Iberic Peninsula, could explain why the, the Spanish plausible. tracks don't match up with the French. Yes, tracks. because it's, even with dictators and political stuff, and it's not very normal that the whole rest of Europe has different train tracks than the Iberian Peninsula. So I think this, I, I didn't remember, I didn't, it didn't occur to me at the time, but yes, this could be another line of evidence. It's a critical line of evidence. I think you should. Mm -hmm consider uh, at least a personal uh, uh, personal communication reference in your next okay. publication. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Sorry. Uh, related to Jonathan's question about if this is a unique event, uh, if you look at also another place that uh, it's not so big and uh, also attempted world domination, I think it might have another event also, right? What event? Maybe in England? <laughs> it could be. In England could also have It been. looks like, like, right? Because it's not that big. It's isolated. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it might be. Hello? Do you think that maybe like Superman, we have like these awesome powers because of our yellow sun, but they're just like asleep or something? Like Portuguese people are like just super beans, but something is like delayed or something? Can you elaborate a little bit? It would be nice. I think it would be fun, but I have not investigated on that. It, uh Thank you very much. That was one of the most convincing things I've ever seen. 